Please stop drinking. It's an affront to God. Don't you start with that God shit again, Alberta. You're destroying us with your blasphemy. What about you, you fucking bitch? You are never here. I raise our son on my own. Up in that church, flirting with those men. You're a fucking hypocrite. I do no such thing. But I tell you this, the men who go to church and give themselves to God are more man than you'll ever be. <laughs> Robert. to remain faithful until death and allow his soul to be reborn.
afraid I have some bad news. Which is? I believe the condition is terminal. How long? I've seen some miracles over the years. Forget the miracles. How long? Three months. Maximum. Thank you, Doctor. The Tsar appreciates your candor. But as I'm sure you can appreciate, you would like to be left alone now. Of course. Doctor? Why did you do that? Cesar wants a second opinion. Vodka, fashusta, dvasti. What the fuck is this? This is... This is your job, Levin. And if I cut it, you'll be dead in a matter of minutes. Now, hand me over that gun. Is a chair over there? Take a seat. Slowly. Are you going to kill me? If I was going to kill you, I would have killed you already. Now please do not let me ask you again. Take a seat.
Put your hands behind your back. Tell me, what is your name? Vladimir. <laughs> Vladimir. What's so funny? Well, I have lived in the Soviet Union now for a decade. And this is the first time I've met a man called Vladimir who has a German accent. Given your German accent, I'm sure you would know. Yes, you'll have to forgive me now. Because of my age, my mind is not quite what it used to be. Tell me, do I know you? I don't think so. Hmm. What is your name? Adler. No, you are white. I do not know you. But it is becoming apparent you do know me. What do you know? Tell me. In Germany during the war, you were a wanted man. We diverted considerable resources into finding you. It was considered one of our most embarrassing failures. And do you know how and why I became a wanted man? You stole a book which gives life to the inanimate. Absolutely incorrect. I did not steal the book. It came into my possession by chance. And the soldiers you killed? Was that by chance too? They were by no means soldiers. They were dirty, evil, nasty bastards. So what's your next move here? Kill me? No. I think it's time you and I played a little game. Do you know Russian roulette? Yes. Very good. Then you will know that I will fire this pistol at you three times. And if by chance you manage to avoid the single bullet in the barrel on all three occasions, I will simply let you go. How can I trust you to keep your word? Now, you trust me to leave you go. And I trust you to leave me be. But we can't forget. You are a Nazi war criminal. And the authorities would much rather you apprehended than me. So what is it to be? I will. You will? Good. So let the games begin. Why is this necessary? I've already said I'll leave you alone. Now, just let me go. Now, where would be the fun in that? Stop this and let me go! Final roll of the dice. Now open your mouth. Open your mouth. Lucky, lucky boy! 
Now let me go. Well, yes. I did promise you that, didn't I? Yes. But the trouble is, you see, Vabat made no such promise. Who the hell is Robert? Why do you still have dolls in your room? I'm too little old for that. When I uh, was growing up, these uh, dolls, uh, they were the only friends I had. I would like you to take a flight to Kaliningrad tomorrow. The Baltic region. Why do I need to go there? I want you to pay a visit to Ivan Troitsky. What's he said now? He's talking to an English newspaper, huh? Eh? Used words like suppression of democracy. I want you to take care of it. Why me? He has a weakness for beautiful women. If he's alerted to your presence, you could charm him far easier than I. I see. You leave tomorrow afternoon.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am so very, very grateful for you to make it to tonight's show. Now, it is my greatest pleasure to welcome on stage the Enchanted Dolls, Robert, Miss Cyclops, and Kolesnikov. <laughs> Mr. Mayor Holt? Yes, one minute, one minute. <laughs> what is it? Good evening. My name is Olga. I've always had a great interest in dolls. Your soul is amazing. Oh. I thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. I don't want to disturb you. I just have one question. Of course. How do you get your dolls to move so freely? I did not see any strings or rods. <laughs> My darling. You would never ask a magician to reveal his tricks now, would you? I suppose not. Hmm. Uh, I really am very tired after tonight's show. I, I should be getting home now. But I thank you for coming, and uh, I really am very glad you enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night, Olga. We do not hold greed as this template. We are in this house and we share. Now, all those people outside, they may think and call us many, many, many things. But your papa never taught you to be greedy. We share our food, our toys, and most of all, our love. Now, papa's not that angry at the moment, but he can get ferocious. Robert, get Papa a cup of tea. And a biscuit.
How was the trip? Interesting. And Trotsky? He won't be talking to anyone anymore. Good. Very good. I notice you returned the letters and planned. Any particular reason? Yes, I decided to watch a fear or so. At my own expense, of course. Suppose the need to relax after the business is understandable. You don't understand, Stoitskov. This was no ordinary so. How do you mean? The so was gold. The enchanted dolls. You and your dolls again, eh? Huh? These were very different. They moved independently. No puppetry. I think maybe you had too much wine, Olga. I was stone cold sober. This show was hosted by a man called Sir J. Mayer Gold. I tried to speak to him at theater, but he was not receptive. I followed him home and I saw him interact with the dolls. They moved as if they were living beings. Sounds outlandish. Why are you telling me this? If he can get dolls to life, perhaps he can use his powers to help the Tsar avoid death. If it works on inanimate objects, surely it could work on human beings too. Interesting. But you must understand, I am very skeptical. It could simply have been a form of magic trick or an illusion. I know what I saw and it was no illusion. And you say this man's name was Meyer Holt. Interesting for he had a German accent. A Soviet name with a German accent. Okay. We'll look into it. Let me know what you find. children. This time we said good night. Do you have the money? <laughs> Not time for formalities, I see. We agreed on 50,000 rubles. Not until you give us what we want. I want the money first. 
You are in no position to give orders, Herzog. Escaped Nazis usually aren't treated with such generosity. I am sure you will consider what I tell you to be of great value. We'll be the judge of that. Where would you like to begin? The man living in Kaliningrad under the name Sir J. Meyerhold. You mentioned that you know his real identity. Amos Blackwood. He is a toy maker from the German region of Bavaria. In 1939, one of my superior officers acquired a book from Josef von Hammersmark. The book contains a collection of spells and mystical teachings. In uh, 1941, the book was stolen from Nazi headquarters by a turncoat with a vendetta against the Führer. Somehow, Amos Blackwood came into possession of the book. This book, what is so special about it? For one thing, there are spells within it which can bring inanimate objects to life. It's many of the spells in the book deal with the resurrection of the dead. Some say the recipient of certain spells will be granted eternal life. So what you're saying is that a book can bring someone back from the dead or even allow someone to live forever. That is right. Travel to Kaliningrad tomorrow and visit the toy maker. First, offer him the 50,000 rubles to come to Moscow and work with us. If he's not receptive, just kill him and take the book. Good afternoon, oh. Mr. Mayor Holt. Who gave me a front there, my dear? <laughs> How can I help you? I didn't mean to frighten you. I'm Olga. Remember, we met uh, a week ago. Ah, Olga. Yes. How can I help you? I work for Joseph Stalin. The Tsar, he is very sick at the moment. And we believe that you can aid in his recovery. Uh, tell me how I can help, my dear. With the power of your book. The book? There is no need to play games, Mr. Blackwood. We know who you are. We know what that book can do. All we are seeking to do is to make a business deal with you. I have 50,000 rubles I can offer. All you have to do is come back to Moscow with me and use that power of a book on the Tsar. Bah, 50,000 rubles. That is a lot of money. So you will accept? Absolutely not. I must say, I do admire your honesty. The show is long finished. That leaves me only one option. Where is the book? I do not know what you're talking about. I do have your home address. Perhaps. I will find it there. Say goodbye, Black Wolf. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to do, little man? I'm afraid your plagues will hurt me.
killed you. Everything about the book you heard, it was true. <laughs> deployed in Kaliningrad, seeking a high-risk target. She was scheduled to call in more than five hours ago, and has failed to do so. As you know, this is unprecedented for her. Indeed it is, sir. We will fly to Kaliningrad immediately. Olga shared information concerning two locations the high-risk target frequented. If she needs our support, then we will provide it. Yes, sir. You are dismissed. the second address. Now! I want that fucking toy maker captured. Understood, sir. Okay, my children, it is time to go, and I know this is not your preferred method of travel, but you just have to be good, be quiet, and stay still. Okay. Shh. Quiet now. Come with us willingly, or we'll drag your corpse out of here. Make your choice. Yes. Yes, of course, gentlemen. Of course I will come with you willingly. But please tell me, where is it we going? We'll be boarding a private flight to Moscow. Now, where is the book? The book? It's foolish of you to pretend you don't know what I'm talking about. That book is the only thing keeping you alive. It's in the safe over there. Yeah. Petrov, try it. The numbers to the locker. Tell me. Aye. Stolen will get you nowhere. If you don't give us the numbers, we'll simply kill you and crack safe ourselves. 
Uh, the way I see it, gentlemen, as soon as you have the book, you will kill me anyway. We have orders to bring you along with the book. Contrary to what you believe, we want to work with you, not against you. Of course. <laughs> That's exactly what the Nazi said. Stop wasting our time, you old fuck. Just remember, I've forgotten more about inflicting pain than you'll ever know. Yes, of course. Twenty-three to the left, four to the right, three to the left. Now, Mr. Toymaker, are you going to travel quietly, or do we have to tie you up and put you in the bagajnik? Oh, no need for that, gentlemen. No need at all. I will come with you fine and dandy. But please, let me ask you one thing. What's that? If I'm going to be away from home for a long time, I, I need a fresh set of clothes. Please, gentlemen, they're just upstairs in the bedroom. I don't have time for that. Please. The suitcase is already packed. That's all I have to do is pick it up. Better off. Get a suitcase. Thank you very much. This is not a hotel. You carry your own fucking luggage. Absolutely. Are we leaving? Yes. But one thing before we do. Was that really necessary? He's about 100 years old. What the hell is he going to do? Why well, take a chance? Help me carry this piece of shit to the car. A little coercion, sir. Quiet, Romanov. Sold man can speak for himself. So tell me, Mr. Blackwood, you want to be a citizen of this country, yet you do not support our esteemed leader. I will do whatever you want me to do, so long as it avoids bloodshed. You weren't so interested in avoiding bloodshed at the theater. I saw what you did to my colleague. Every man has a right to defend himself. Let me tell you something. You must the old fuck. If you didn't have something of value to Cesar, I would kill you right here. Maybe one day, you might get your chance. <laughs> what is the book? Now sit, sir. Shut up. Romanov. Yes, sir. Go to the cockpit. Tell the pilot we are ready. Yes, sir. Hey, wake up! What? You drunken fuck. Can you even fly this plane today? Of course, it's of course. What are you doing? Sobering you up. I hope it worked. 
If there's any problems with this flight, they're gonna throw you into one of these turbine engines. You got that? All right, all right. Not so loud. I got a headache. Yeah, you'll have more than fucking headache if you don't get us to Moscow. Now let's go. Hey. Where the hell is the food? We're starving back there. Ten minutes. You said that an hour ago. Cook us slow. I think it's you to slow. I'm going to take a shit now. When I'm back, that shit better be ready. Understand? Yeah, yeah. Don't mess with chef, my friend. I was told this book can provide the gift of immortality. It looks like voodoo rubbish to me. How do I know this is going to benefit the Tsar for sure? I suppose that is a risk you take. I'm not a man who likes to take risks. We should test it. And how do you propose we do that? Romanov. Yes, sir. Right. If this book is so powerful, show me. Fine. I will show you. What are you doing? The reader of the spell needs to physically connect with the recipient. Do you want this or not? Okay, but no tricks, or you won't be coming back from the dead. Corpus Levitus Diablo Dominium Mando What now? Now... We wait. So, I guess it works. What the fuck?
ficou a busca. You shot me. I needed to test the power of the book. You expect me to present this to Stalin without evidence it actually works? What if it didn't work? But it did. So you gamble with my life? I gave you a direct order. Go and check the rest of the plane. In a situation like this, I wipe my ass with your feelings. Now, obey the order. Before I do some damage, you won't come back from. up there. He's been gone for an awful long time now. You know, Mr. Blackwood, you seem to know something I don't. I know nothing. Information I received said you used this book to animate several dolls you created. Any truth in that? You shouldn't listen to rumors. They can be very misleading. But not in this case, no? Your dolls. They are on board this plane, yes? Very good, Mr. Blackwood. <laughs> it seems that your dolls have gotten the better of my men. Huh? So what happens now? She kill me? That is entirely up to you. I could kill you right now. But you've had this book for some time. And I suspect you have used it to gain immortality. Am I correct? You could say that is a safe assumption. You are still flesh and bone. You may be able to live forever. But if I mess up your face, and cut off your hands and limbs, would you really want to? You would have to be very, very quick. My children, they would kill you before you made the first cut. So what next? Must I accept the predictable conclusion? Hmm? Or is there a twist in the tale? Hmm. How about this for a twist? I never intended to take you to the Tsar in the first place. I always intended to use the book for my own benefit. I one day plan to lead this country. So, immortality is rather appealing. Let's make a deal. I'm listening. Upon our arrival in Moscow, I will personally authorize a payment to you of 62 million rubles. Untraceable. And, um, what is it you'd expect in return? It's a book for one. 
and for the duration of this flight, guidance and advice on its use. Then, when you have received your money in Moscow, you leave the country. What if we just kill you instead? Then what will you be left with? With the money I am offering you, you can start a new life anywhere in the world. Kill me now, and you are left with a very uncertain future. <laughs> I want money. <laughs> I want freedom. You see, Major, I have been running for a very, very long time now. I'm not going to run anymore. did we learn today together? Together, we can overcome our evils by being good. Yes. Now, let's go with haste and speed. Let's go. This shit is good. The woods is plain. Whose orders are these? Mine. This plane is now under new management. We are no longer going to Moscow. Where are we going? Britain. A Soviet plane cannot enter the airspace. But they will shoot us down. That is for me to worry about. Now. We would this plane. And what if I do not? Then you can say hello to my little friend. You kill me and every nobody to fly the plane. Yeah, you crash and die. You just let me worry about that. We can concentrate on you for a second. Now listen to me carefully. If you vivo this plane. There is much chance you will survive. But if not, there is greater chance you will die. Now, what is it going to be? If I take a chance, what is in it for me if I do survive? <laughs> you know, in all my years, there is something I notice in common with the people, no matter what age, race, or nationality. What is that? Greed. This flight could cost me my life. It could. But if you survive, that could be the greatest gift ever. Now what is it going to be? Keep the eyes on this naughty boy.
What have we got? Strange. Pretty much everything on that flight was destroyed, but look at these. That book and these dolls, completely untouched, no damage whatsoever. Unusual, but not impossible. Perhaps they were securely packed in the cargo area. No, everything in that section was completely destroyed, but look at these, not even a scratch. Have you looked through that book? Yeah. What's in it? It's very bloody witchy, to be honest. Lots of spells, lots of symbols. Where are the bodies? In the morgue downstairs. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. We've got a similar situation down there. What do you mean? Five bodies recovered, most of them mangled, some completely torn apart. Yet there's one body down there, some old man. Barely a bruise. He's dead, yes? Yes, of course he is, Peter. He's in the morgue, old chap. I understand that. Just the way you're talking, it sounded like you were going to say he miraculously survived. No, he's very much dead. But, in a crash of that severity, where well, the plane has suffered both fire damage and water submersion, it's intriguing. So, what do you think it means? Mm, I don't know. I'd like to read that book for starters and find out exactly what these people are all about. All right. We'll make a start on that. I'll go down to the morgue, check out that body. OK. Corpus Levitus. Diablo Dominium. Mondo Vicium. Creepy voodoo shit.
It's true. There are no abrasions on the body. Surprising. He's hardly a young man. Looks rather weak and fragile. Indeed, he is of advanced years. But that's not what interests me. You see, earlier this evening, I made an incision in the chest of the corpse. Yeah? Where do you make the incision? Right here, around the subclavicle muscle. There's nothing there now. Precisely. Are you saying this body has some kind of, I don't know, self-healing ability? It appears so. I, I, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. His vital signs indicate death, yet his body still seems capable of healing from a wound. Oh, if his body can heal, why does he still look so decrepit? I've no idea. The, the body can heal from a wound, but it can't reverse the aging process. Fascinating. I agree. I've taken blood samples from the cadaver and sent them to the lab. Should be interesting. Okay. Let me know when they arrive. I will. Why do you consider this such an urgency, sir? We've been looking for Amos Blackwood for ten years in connection with a remarkable piece of literature which is of great importance to our government. In 1941, we sent a German double agent to intercept him on a train heading for Nuremberg. Unfortunately, the agent was killed. Sounds like Blackwood ended up in the Soviet Union. Not that it matters now, considering he's dead. But it's imperative we retrieve that book before someone else discovers the true value of it. Papa as much as he's missed you. <laughs> Come, let's get out of here quickly. <laughs> oh, Papa feels good. <laughs> Sir, so, what the hell happened in there? Amos Blackwood is still alive. But the agents claimed he was dead. They were wrong. 
bloody incompetent. So what now, sir? We must inform all the intelligence agencies that we have a fugitive on the move. But, sir, you said you sought to protect him back in 41. That's right. Then why make him our enemy? Because he's strong enough to take it. He's not the hero anymore. But he could be again one day. A hero is someone who understands the responsibility that comes with his freedom. But of course, freedom can only benefit those who know how to use it. So, your move, Mr. Blackwood. Thank you.